and welcome back to Moscow, Finland, Sweden, Alaska. <laughs> hey, what's up? I'm Rafael D. Furia, aka Rafi D. Is me, and I am back at again on another beautiful Friday night. And this Friday night, it is actually night outside and it is snowing here in Rovigo. This is one misconception that a lot of people have about moving to Italy is that it's always warm, always sunny, but Italy can get quite cold in the winter. I remember a number of years ago flying over Rome when it was completely covered in snow. But this for Rovigo outside of the Alps is maybe a little bit unusual, but not unheard of. But this week, I wanted to answer a couple of questions that I've been receiving about retiring to Italy and moving to Italy a little bit later in life. Ooh, snowflakes are getting bigger and they're getting closer. <laughs> but before we get too much deeper into the video, if you would like to see more content like this about moving to Italy, Italian dual citizenship, and living life abroad, please be sure to subscribe to that notification bell turned on. And if you can also give this video a like and share it with your friends, that would be greatly appreciated as it does help the channel. And to help make more videos, as possible. It is never too early or too late to get started with your Christmas shopping. You can go to rafaelifuria.com slash NYAG gear for shirts, baby onesies, mugs, and more like posters with Italy-centric designs that all go to help make videos like this possible. You can go to rafaelifuria.com slash Patreon to help on a monthly basis or to just help out one time, you can go to rafaelifuria.com slash support. But let's get into this. Let's answer the questions that I've been getting by email. This may become a series of videos and I'm going to see if I can answer answer one or two emails. But anyway, from Ron M, subject vacationing in Italy before moving to Italy. Dear Raphael, after I get my senior citizen aches and pains under control, I'm thinking that spending a few extended vacations on a visa and traveling throughout Italy is better than moving to Italy at my age of 70 years. Number one, I'm single with no family ties. Number two, where is a good central location to start? Number three, English speaking cities near good transportation. Four, is picking up the Italian language as I go such a terrible idea? Currently, I'm still conjugating verbs through YouTube. And number five, I have a very modest income and can easily survive eating veggies and living in one room rather than an apartment, etc. Your thoughts. And so this was Ron's first initial email. Just to clarify a little bit more, I asked him kind of when he was talking about a modest income, what was he talking about? And in his response, he mentioned that he was thinking roughly about a thousand dollars per month. And just consider that a thousand dollars in euros will be significantly less and then also depending on the exchange rate it's going to fluctuate in both directions but since i can remember the euro has been higher valued than the dollar but has gone anywhere between like a dollar 14 and a dollar 50 for one euro so when thinking about how far your money will go that might be something very important to take into account and how you will be getting your money out are you going to have to pay international banking fees transaction fees are you just going to be paying on a card? Are you going to have to pay conversion fee each time? Or are you just going to want to go to an ATM and withdraw and minimize that? Or do you want to get maybe a bank account here or a prepaid card here and then use something like TransferWise and only pay the TransferWise fee? If you were to ask me, I would probably say if you're planning on being here a little bit longer term, maybe get like a post-pay card, an N26 card, or go to Unicredit and transfer that money to yourself from an American account to the Italian account with TransferWise or something similar. It's not always the cheapest, but depending on if you do it through a debit card or a direct debit from your account, then the prices can come down. But where is a good central location to start? In general, I would say maybe for getting around the country, even though I'm not the craziest about it, Bologna might actually be a good starting point because from Bologna, you can get to Venice, Rome, Florence, Naples, Milan, um, and then with the airport there, plenty of other locations around Italy and Europe for not that much and pretty quickly. For example, from Bologna, if you take an Italo train, a faster train, you could potentially get to Rome, the center of Rome, in maybe say two hours, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, roughly around there. And then if you're taking Trenitalia on one of the other trains, it might take a little bit longer. Or if you wanted to take a flight to the south, Naples, Palermo, or even to go up to Germany, Switzerland, France, whatever it might be, this is all gonna probably be within a few hours, maybe to get to Sicily, under two hours potentially by flight, but with $1,000 a month, I think traveling around is gonna be a bit tricky. And considering that rough budget, the South may be better. However, if you go to someplace outside of a larger city, for example, like where I live in Rovigo, 
potentially maybe you could find a whole apartment 350-ish. But then you have to consider, do you have the condominium fees on top of that? Or are the condominium fees a part of that? And to find a roommate in a smaller city, a smaller town, is going to be a lot more difficult. But in a city, you may be more likely to find a roommate situation, but you may end up paying the same for one room in an apartment in a city as you might pay for an apartment out in the countryside or out in a smaller city. But again, then you have to take into consideration the extra transportation fees. And will those balance out? Because even even in the north, here in Rovigo, you could potentially get something for a similar price as what you might find in Montopoli in Puglia. I've been hearing a bit about this recently and the price differences I've actually been finding are not as big as I may have originally thought. But being a senior and thinking about retiring to Italy, you also want to make sure you have places to go for medicine, for doctors, for, for these types of appointments. But even if you're not a senior, if you're someone who's quite healthy, it's still not a bad idea to be not too far away from a hospital, to have that access in case of an emergency, in case of that little thing that might just happen. Some of you may remember towards the end of last year, I ended up burning my hand uh, pretty bad. And to have the emergency room in a pretty close proximity to where I was living made a big difference in my ability to just say, okay, fine, I'm just going to go to the doctor. But also, if you're not an Italian citizen, if you're not getting Italian citizenship by descent, or if you haven't become an Italian citizen somehow, your access to the medical services will be something that you will have to pay for out of pocket. You will need to be covered under some sort of medical insurance, but the prices for that are really going to depend on what you end up finding. Medical services on the public system, if you're able to get on, can be very cheap and can be just a couple hundred euros for the year, or can be less than a couple hundred euros, can be less than a hundred euros for students in some cases. But if you're talking about just eating vegetables and bread, for example, is that something you're already doing or is that a life change? that you're going to have to think about. Because if you're already sacrificing so much, then that little bit of meat <laughs> that you might be eating during the week just anyway to begin with, is it going to make that week a little bit more rough for you? That's just one thing to consider. Try living that same lifestyle where you already live before you move abroad, just to kind of give it that test run to see if it's something you can really do to make that budget for yourself, to live by that same budget you would be living by abroad. Of course, there are always those unknowns because you never know what kind of apartment you're going to find and what kind of prices you're going to find and any kind of emergencies, last minute costs that might come up. It's really completely unknown. And then going back to the question, is picking up the Italian language as I go such a terrible idea. In my opinion, it's kind of the only way to really learn the language by really throwing yourself into it and trying to speak the language because you can learn the language in a book. And thankfully, Italian as it's written and as it's spoken are much more similar than English as it's spoken and as it's written. So you do have that helping you there. But pronunciation, for example, if you're learning in a class in the United States and, you're, and your teacher is just kind of sitting there letting you get by with your American accent and not really drilling into you, trying to improve on your pronunciation when you get here people are gonna have a difficult time to understand you even for me like being American myself and even though I'm familiar with the mistakes that Americans make sometimes when American friends of mine speak to me in Italian I'm just like dude I can't understand you like let's just speak in English it's the language we both speak it's gonna be a lot easier for the both of us I mean anyway my Italian is not great anyway I can get around but if we're both native speakers let's just speak English but I would say definitely learn as much as you can before you arrive here because once you're here you're already in the thick of it getting an apartment going to the bank going to these things you're not guaranteed to find people who speak English so if you're coming here on a modest salary yeah you could make it work like look I'm not in such a great financial position myself definitely working on it definitely been working on it but is it easy to get by I wouldn't say so if you can have any kind of backup savings behind you then definitely that's going to help you I would say save as much as you can before arriving here because even if you wanted to attempt to work on a retirement visa you, you can't do that if you wanted to come here on a retirement visa you have to be financially self-sufficient and you have to be able to prove that to the Italian government but if you're wanting to come here on a tourist visa just for three months here three months there for three months at a time twice per year then maybe if you're just coming just for a vacation for just like say the spring and the fall winter whatever it might be however you want to match up those 90 days out of 180 days for whatever reason the footage for this
this next question, something, some sort of technical glitch happened. But to get into the next question that I quickly wanted to answer in this video is from Chris S. The message is, hello, Raphael. First and foremost, I love your videos and thank you for putting them out. Well, thank you, Chris, for coming to check them out. We find them extremely helpful and enjoyable to watch. He's not of Italian descent, but he loves Italy, its people, food, and culture. Hashtag relatable. That's why my wife and I are looking to retire there in about five years. We're from the US and are in our 40s and would like to find a town in Italy that's not too hot in the summer, has access to big city by train for when we want to travel either by air or train throughout Europe and isn't overly expensive. We're not big on tourist cities or towns. Does such a place in Italy exist? Thank you. Christopher. So I will answer part of this question in this video and part of it in an upcoming video. But for now, let's get back to me outside in the cold. And so this has some crossover with that last message where Chris is looking for a place away from the tourists and Ron is looking for a place that is more English speaking friendly. I would say in general in Italy, you don't count on being able to speak in English. In larger cities, more than likely, yeah. But of course, it's gonna be more expensive, like cities like Milan, Padova. Florence, Bologna, Rome, Naples. In these larger places, you'll find English-speaking communities. And I've heard of villages in Tuscany where you can find pockets of expats, but I haven't personally looked into it. My whole thing is I've been trying to escape the expat bubble. And if we're talking about places that are not so expensive and close to transportation, this gets a little tricky. For example, I came to Rovigo because here in Rovigo, you're in the north and you have a little bit easier access to certain airports like for example from where I live I could easily get to the Venice Airport or the Bologna Airport a little bit more of a stretch would be the Verona Airport and a little bit more of a stretch than that would be Rome Rome would probably be a little bit easier than Milan oh my feet are freezing ha oh they're turning the tater tots out here okay I gotta end this quickly so I'm sure there's gonna be a part two to this at some point. Be sure to let me know down in the comment section below if you'd like to see that. But anyway, just to quickly kind of go over a little bit more. I would say if you're looking for a place that's easily accessible and with great transportation connections, look just outside of major cities. Like outside of Milan, maybe within an hour on the train, you'll be able to find a lot of nice cities and little towns that will have the same kind of access to the airports as you would from maybe even the city center like Linate and Malpensa or Bergamo, Verona, depending on which side of Milan you're in and where, what connections you have from the specific city or village or town that you end up in. Also, there are some airports that have more budget airlines and there's some airports that have more kind of main carriers, like some of the larger airlines like Lufthansa, Alitalia, and so on. But anyway, I think this might be a good place to wrap up. Of course, this is an open conversation. And if you have anything to say, please leave that in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Or if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. And I may be able to get them in a future video. And if you're still looking for a Christmas gift for a loved one and interested to help out to make more videos like this possible, you can go to rafaeldecoria.com slash N-Y-A-G gear for Italy-centric designs on shirts, mugs, baby onesies, posters, and more. And if you would like to help out on a monthly basis, you can go to rafaeldecoria.com dot com slash patreon or to help out just once you can go to rafaeldefuria.com slash support and as always again thank you so much for joining me on another beautiful friday night this snowy cold beautiful friday night in beautiful warm tropical italy <laughs> i'm rafael de Furia, aka rafi d is me thank you for joining me again and i look forward to seeing you all next friday have a great weekend and a wonderful upcoming week and have a wonderful holiday season see ya